What's up guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the image transmission settings within the DJI GO app. This is a tab that many people often look over, but can be very useful when dealing with problems surrounding the live video feed coming from your aircraft. To find these settings, we can click on general settings, located in the top right corner, and then from there click on the frequencies tab located along the side. Before we get into the settings, I do want to mention that an occasional skip or black screen through the live video feed is common. It's never going to be as smooth or clear as the footage that comes off of the SD card. The first thing that we will discuss is the difference between 2.4GHz and 5.8GHz. These are known as frequencies. Now frequency is defined as the number of waves that pass a fixed place in a given amount of time. 2.4G is a lower frequency, thus creating longer waves, and 5.8G is a higher frequency, which creates shorter waves. You may be wondering what frequency is right for you, and the answer to this question is that it all depends on your environment. To help you find out which frequency you should be using, let's go a little bit more in depth. First, let's take a look at 2.4G. As I stated, this is a low frequency with much longer waves. These longer waves are capable of penetrating certain objects which make it favorable for long range flight. Now although long range flight does sound great to many drone pilots, that's about the only good thing you'll get out of using it. One of the major problems with 2.4G is decreased video quality. When using this frequency, you'll notice much more noise and blur within the video that's being transmitted to your device. Another common problem is how crowded a frequency of 2.4G is. Many devices, like computers, operate using this frequency, making it hard for the aircraft and the remote to communicate. This is one of the reasons that causes pilots to lose control over their aircraft in busy areas like cities or neighborhoods. Even when making tutorial videos in my room with devices surrounding me, I notice that the black screens come up quite often. Now let's take a look at 5.8G. As I stated, this is a high frequency with much shorter waves. These short waves cannot penetrate objects, which makes it optimal for flying in close ranges. This means that long range flights should not be conducted under this frequency, as you'll get image transmission errors a lot quicker. Although you can't get that much range out of your drone when operating at this frequency, there certainly is a lot of benefits that come with it. The first advantage is better video quality. Because you are flying closer and at a higher frequency, you will notice that there is much less noise and blur in the image coming from the live video feed. Another advantage is that 5.8G is less commonly used, making it easier for the remote and the drone to communicate. If we look at 2.4G and 5.8G side by side, we'll notice that the pros and cons are basically flipped. Now I read an analogy on the Phantom Pilots forum from a user by the name of Ian Wood that stated, imagine you're trying to talk to someone from across a large room. If there are 5 other people in the room talking, you should still be able to communicate easily. If there are 100 people in the room and they're talking too, you have a harder time. I think that this analogy does a great job at comparing how crowded 2.4G is compared to 5.8G. There are just so many less devices operating on the 5.8G frequency, and it's going to be a lot easier for the drone to communicate with its remote controller or the pilot. Next up we have channels, and these can be set for us automatically if we set our channel mode to auto, but if we like to select it on our own, we can select custom. Along with changing our channel and custom mode, we also get to choose a custom transmission quality between 4 megabits per second and 10 megabits per second. Whenever I think of channels, I always think back to using walkie talkies when I was younger. I used these a lot with my dad when I was in the woods hunting. They really were old pieces of tech, but they were pretty efficient at communicating as cell phones really weren't all that big. The way that walkie talkies worked were basically you set them all to the same channel in order to communicate with each other. And let's say that one channel you chose had some high frequency or maybe you were picking up some other signals from it. You could always switch to another channel and find one that was nice and clear where no one else was talking. DJI drones basically work the same. You want to try to find a channel that has as little frequency as possible so that the remote can communicate with the drone to the best of its abilities. The chart in the middle of the screen that has to do with channels is fairly easy to read. Basically, if there's a channel marked in blue, that's the one that you are currently on. Then we have green and red. Green represents stable and red represents unstable. We'll see lines shooting up occasionally from some of the different channels. If we see a tall red line, we always want to stay away from that channel as that means that there is a bunch of frequency located on that channel. So if we see one that's red shooting all the way up to negative 60 dBm, we always want to stay away from it. Now let's talk a little bit about how the channels interact with the frequencies. First of all, when we look at 2.4G, we'll notice that there's only 8 available channels and a lot of them are marked red or unstable, especially when I'm sitting in my room making this video. This kind of wraps full circle as in the beginning of this video I did say that you're going to get poor image transmission quality and it was a crowded frequency as a lot of other devices are using it, thus giving you a lot of unstable channels. 
when we switch our frequency over to 5.8G, we'll notice that we get a lot more channels, a total of 24. And this makes it a lot easier to find a channel that's more stable and has less things going on. At the end of the day, I really see no benefit to using a custom channel mode, as you're always going to have to go back and keep checking if your channel is stable or unstable. I would always recommend just setting it to automatic, as it's going to go through all the channels and find the one that works best. Sometimes you'll notice a quick drop in frames that only happens for a second or two, and that just means that sometimes the drone may be switching over to a different channel. So guys, that about wraps this video up. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I haven't tried to upload daily. Also, make sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions whatsoever about frequencies or channels. I know this is probably one of the hardest things to wrap your mind around. It really did take me a long time to study all of this and make sure I got all my information right. But again, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, I'll be happy to answer them as soon as possible. So guys, again, this video is coming to an end, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.